707 on KGO. Good evening. I'm Pat Thurston. I'm in for Drex this evening. Hi, and I have a studio full of people who would like you to become acquainted with them. You're, I, I'm sure all of you are aware that uh, Ed Lee is the mayor of San Francisco. There's a, a group of individuals who have an organization called One Two Three uh, Vote 123 to replace Ed Lee. They are Amy Weiss, Francisco Herrera, and Stuart Shuffman, also known as Broke Ass Stuart. And uh, they, uh, they are here in studio with me. We're going to get to know them. We're going to talk with them about the various issues. And we invite you to join us for all of that at 808-0810-8080-810. But first, uh, Amy, why don't you start us out? Tell us what this uh, Vote 123 to replace Ed Lee, what's that all about? So I decided to run back in December of last year. And I had thought at that time, like many of us sitting here, that there would be a more established candidate, not a more serious candidate, not a more necessarily viable candidate, but a more established candidate that would be running. And so I started off thinking, let's go ahead and use the vote one, two, three ranked choice voting strategy that progressives came up with so that we could actually align our campaigns with, against an incumbent rather than fighting against each other. So when it turned out that this was the field that I was running alongside of Francisco and Stuart as people powered candidates, I wanted to be able to use ranked choice voting in a way that would have a real chance of giving Ed Lee a run for his money. And I wouldn't be aligning with Stuart and Francisco if I didn't think that they believed in the future of the city and would be better alternatives than Ed Lee for our well, future mayor. Well, Francisco, would you explain to us what ranked choice voting is? Yeah, ranked choice vote. Ranked choice voting came uh, uh, is a process by which you can actually choose. It gives more power to the elector, to the voter, because you could say, I want one, this person I want would want my number one choice, but if it doesn't come through to be, then I can get number two, and I can actually vote for a third person that could be... So you vote for three people you, in order of your preference. Yeah, and that actually widens the gap, the the pool of votes but it also gives an advantage to the voter to be able to to say you know what we can get we don't have to have a power such a powerful position like right now we have almost a dictatorial position in san francisco with with and not just with mayor at lee but just the structure of the powerful mayor and incumbent and all that power so in oakland for example one of the one, two, three ranked choice vote, votes is the one that replaced Gene Kwan a couple of years back in that election. So it gives more power to the electorate and it gives us a place to be able to participate for those of us who are not millionaires, right? <laughs> and so you you basically take all the, at the, at the time of counting, you count all the number ones and then whoever is, if there's no one that has 51%, then you actually count the number twos and then you count the number threes and the person who has the most votes wins. It also replaces that very expensive process of runoff voting. Right, uh, right. And so actually it was done for that reason, but I've always liked the second reason, which it gives us uh, the voters more power. So Stuart, um, it, it only, the second and third choices only matter if there's not a majority of voters uh, voting for the number one candidate? That's correct. So what happens is uh, if, if uh, Ed Lee doesn't get, what is it, 51%, mm -hmm. then um, it becomes a runoff. So there'll be rounds of voting. And and so, for example, the first time around uh, in 2011, Ed Lee only got, um, I think, 50,000 votes in the first round, uh, whereas John Avalos got, like, 30,000 votes. Mm -hmm. So, but as, you know, there were so many candidates that year, so, like, each round, whoever gets the least amount of votes gets knocked off and their second and third place votes get transferred over to the next round exactly. of, of, of who's there. So their second place votes gets counted for the next person's first place votes and vice versa and so on and so forth. Okay, so the first place votes, let's say Ed Lee gets 40% and the next highest person gets 20%. He's mm -hmm. not so going to get 40%. Uh, uh, just, for, mm -hmm. just so for the sake <laughs> of understanding. So that then uh, he would maintain those votes as the number one votes, right? Because he's not the lowest, and so he's not thrown out. So he still gets those. Right. Okay. So, so let, let's say right. let's say Joe Schmo it, it gets knocked out, his, and his second place vote is Amy, and his third place vote is Ed Lee. Mm -hmm. So Ed Lee will still get that third place vote, but Amy will get that second place vote, and it counts as a first. It's really labyrinthine. 
it's a it's a really complex system that I'm still like I think I got a good grasp of it and I'm right. still learning about but it. But it's advantageous to the voters. Absolutely, and it started sure after is. it started after Matt Gonzalez and um, and Gavin Newsom ran in 2003. Right. Because there was a very like you said a very costly runoff that happened. Okay, um, we've got two minutes before we take our first break, and what I want to do is um, I want each of you to take a very short period of time and tell me what your main issue is. Amy? My main issue is coming up with uh, strategic ways for us to restructure investment and support systems so that we can truly have inclusive culturally enriching and sustainable development in San Francisco. Okay, and, and Francisco? Housing, education, mm -hmm. health, uh, particularly really responding to the real housing crisis that so many people are experiencing here in San Francisco. Okay, and, and Stuart? Um, all the things they said, as well as <laughs> starting, starting a public advocate's office to actually tackle corruption in City Hall. Oh, okay, that's interesting. All right, so I'll tell you what we'll do. When we come back, we'll uh, we'll get to to some of your issues, and we'll get to my issues as well. And a lot of these things are overlapping, and uh, we're go going to also invite our listeners to participate at eighty eighty eight ten eight zero eight zero eight ten. And uh, so stick with us if if you want to be a part of this discussion, you can. We'd like to get your questions, and you know you can also use your social media. You can go uh, particularly. You know the easiest thing for me is just for you to send me an email, Pat at K radio.com if there's a question or a comment that you would like to make for one of the candidates and we're also going to try to uh, uh, figure out what the differences are between each of you and between you and Edley and listen I, I want to make sure that uh, I called you broke ass Stuart that is correct is that okay uh, yes, on the ballot, my name is Stuart Shuffman. Okay. Because, and that's important because uh, Jello Biafra and Sister Boom Boom, who previously ran for mayor back in the day, uh, the, the people in the establishment made it harder for people who have silly names to, to run by making it so that you have to have your given name. Okay. It's like so, Facebook. But you're, but exactly, you, it's just like Facebook, exactly. But you're not insulted that I called you broke-ass Stewart. I've been called way worse. Okay. <laughs> All right, and right now, we're going to talk uh, with Lee Graham. I'm sure he's been called worse, too. I hope that's not true. <laughs> All right, I'll Hi, ask. Lee.